And with no further ado, um, please welcome our our um, Chair of the Language Institute, right? Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sukong Tanking Sirisin to uh, preside over this session. Please welcome. Uh, good morning. Good morning from Bangkok, Thailand. So today we have, now we have about 80 or 90, right? Participants, more than 90 participants you know, from around the globe, right? So yeah, good morning to all our colleagues and students. Okay, so welcome, you know, to another uh, wonderful, okay, talk organized by the Language Institute of Thumbasad University. And the topic today mainly involves uh, publications. Okay, so as you can, as you have seen, you know, from the uh, poster, okay, the topic is, you know, seize your opportunities, you know, for a publication. So now in our uh, fields and actually in any field of acad academia now, okay, we need to publish in good journals, okay, for our promotion, academic promotion. And so you need some tips, okay, you know, to do that, you know, successfully. Our speaker today, right, Dr. Supagon, okay, he's one of uh, the faculty members of the Language Institute, okay, he has published, you know, profusely, okay, and he has a lot of experience, you know, with uh, publications, right, you know, in different journals. So he's going to share with you <laughs> tips so that, you know, <laughs> your manuscripts and of course you know you need to prepare you know to be I mean your paper might be rejected as well and today maybe you get you know some 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 tips you know that will help you okay prevent that you know from happening all right so uh, I hope that you will learn a lot you know from Dan Chukagon's talk this morning and so please enjoy okay if you have any questions feel free to ask him Okay, maybe before the end of our session today. So just make the, uh, the full use you know, of the two hours okay, this morning, right? listening and asking questions. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you so much, uh, uh, um, our director of the Language Institute. Now uh, it's time, right, with no further ado, uh, please welcome our speaker of today, Associate Professor Dr. Supakon Putaransin, uh, to deliver his session. Please welcome. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Munton Kanopumpun, right, for being the moderator today, and thank you, Dr. Supong, right. Uh, for the opening speech, right? So, you know, it gives me uh, honor today, right? To give a talk and I'm so excited because there are so many people joining us today. Uh, some of you are my colleagues, right? Some are colleagues from other universities. Some are our alumni, right? Some are our friends, right? So um, uh, you can see my screen, right? Can, can you? Yes, okay. Right, the topic that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to share with you today, okay, in full screen, right? Uh, so this is quite, this is a new topic for me, right? Because, you know, I, I know that some of you are, uh, you know, have, so many right, uh, following my uh, talks, right? So, so you know, I, I want to make something new for you. Right. That, that's why, you know, I talked to Dr. Monton and, you know, I came up with this topic, seizing publication opportunities in Scorpus journals, right? So we are talking about why Scorpus journals, right? Why do we need to publish in Scorpus journals? And then, uh, you know, I think, you know, it's very useful to provide you with some tips, right? So, so that's why, you know, I selected the top 10 reasons for journal rejection, right? So, so you know, uh, some of you may think that it sounds a bit scary, but actually not, right? Because, you know, if we are aware of the <laughs> reasons why, you know, our men are rejected, we can avoid, right? We can avoid being rejected. <laughs> so, uh, this is the outline of my talk today, right? I'm going to cover these three topics, and this is going to last about, all, all of them would, would last about 90 minutes. And then, you know, I will have uh, like the rest of the time, like 20 or 25 to 30 minutes for Q&As, right? Jai Monton will help me, uh, help us as a moderator, right? So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, right? So 
uh, I'll talk about Scorpus first, right? I'm going to show you why Scorpus is very important. And then I'll talk about the publication opportunities for all of us in Scorpus journals, including learned journals that, you know, Language Institute uh, is uh, taking care of. And then I'm going to share with you the top 10 reasons for journal rejection. Right, first of all, right, many people have been, you know, like you, I, I know that, you know, you are quite familiar with the term Scorpus, right? Uh, some of you have heard about Web of Science, they are similar, right? But okay, today we are focusing on Scorpus. Why Scorpus? Uh, getting your papers published in Scorpus is not something easy, right? As you do with uh, international journals, right? Or even national journals. Okay, so Scorpus is something that you should try. Maybe, you know, once or twice, in, at least once or twice uh, in your lifetime, right? Um, Scorpus indexes content, right, from 24,600 active titles and 5,000 publishers, which are rigorously vetted and selected by the review board of Scorpus. So to get your article published in Scorpus is difficult but it would be even more challenging to get one journal indexed in Scorpus because you know the journal must uh, undergo uh, a very challenging procedure, right? There are many steps that we have to take, right? That's why, you know, uh, the Scorpus journals screen all the manuscripts very, very carefully, right? And, you know, it's, it's very likely that they reject right away. They reject outright any manuscripts that, uh, that are not good enough, right? Poorly written, or maybe uh, doesn't match the aim and scope of the journal, right? We are going to take a look at these, right? Uh, Scorpus is good because, you know, according to the Scorpus website, it delivers the broadest overview of global interdisciplinary scientific data and literature across all research fields. So, you know, I would like to emphasize to you guys that they, uh, you know, Scorpus claims itself to cover all research fields. So it means that, uh, you know, there are many, many, you know, an, a large number of titles of journals that are included in Scorpus, right? And if you can get your articles published in Scorpus indexed journals, right, um, you know, it means, number one, that paper would have a lot of impact right, it's going to be cited a lot, right, and you know, it, in one way or another guarantees the quality of your article, right, compared with some other articles that you wrote and got published in, you know, international journals that are not in Scorpus, right. So, I'm, I'm going to share with you first the criteria for Scorpus inclusion. Maybe you may, you may say that, uh, super gone, cool, I don't need to know this because I'm not an editor. But at least if we are aware of the, this criteria, right, we can select the journals, right? We can select the best journals, the right journals that we can submit our manuscripts to, right? So, you know, once you have your own paper, right, you call it manuscript, right? And you submit it to any journal, right? And if, if the journal finally publishes your paper, it's called an article, right? So there are some, some uh, fundamental criteria that scholars apply, right? When they consider the quality of any journals that uh, request to be indexed in scholars, right? So the journal should consist of peer review content, right? You know the word peer review, right? Peer review means, you know, before your paper gets published, right? It must be read and reviewed by at least to uh, scholars in the related disciplines, right? And you know, you have to take their comments and revise your paper until you know the reviewers and the editors are satisfied with the revision. Okay. And uh, the journal that is indexed in Scopus should publish uh, their their issues on a regular basis, right? So, so, you know, I mean, they must be punctual, right? If they say they are going to publish twice, uh, right, uh, twice a year, it must be twice a year in the exact uh, time frame uh, given in the website of the journal, right? If they are late, it means they have very bad performance and they might be re-evaluated re and they might be removed from Scorpus uh, later on. 
and the content should be relevant and readable for international audience. So, so this implies that the content in Scopus Journal should be in English, right? Even though there are some Scopus Journals that publish articles in, in you know, in some other languages, like in Malay, for example, some, some journals that I know, they also publish uh, articles in Malay as well as English. But at least, right, I think about 95% of uh, Scopus Index Journal publish articles in English, right? So, you know, I think, you know, this is like the basics that you should know. If you want to get your paper published in Scopus Journal, right, in, in English, right? And then, uh, of course, right, uh, a very good journal, to get indexed in Scopus must have convincing editorial concept and policy, right? So the policy must be clear, clear enough, right? What do you publish and what you don't publish, right? And the type of peer review, usually right now, uh, we accept only double blind peer review, right? Double blind means the writer doesn't know who the reviewers will be. And in the same way, the reviewers never know who the review, who the authors are, right? So, you know, both sides are like they are blind, right? They are blind, that, that's called double blinded, right? Okay, and you know, uh, scholars pay attention to diversity uh, of uh, geographic distribution of authors, of editors, right? Editor here doesn't mean only the editor in chief, but you, you know, there are those who join the editorial team, right, those who are scholars. Right, so you know they must be from different countries, different. Uh, you know, it would even be better if they are from different continents. And the authors, the authors should have diversity as well, right? Um, for example, right. Uh, if you look at Learn Journal, you can see that uh, many authors are Thais, but but you know we also welcome authors from around the world, now any countries from all the continents, like the United States. Uh, Europe, right, and many other Asian countries, right? We, we welcome, right, all papers around the world because we want to increase our diversity. And then uh, good journals should have quality of content, right? Number one is academic contribution to the field, right? I mean, the research findings that you publish in your article must be something interesting. You should uh, contribute to the field. For example, TESOL, uh, Applied Linguistic, for example, the abstract must be clear, right? So, you know, you should know how to write abstracts, right? The abstract must be in only one paragraph, for example. If your abstract are in many paragraphs, right, chances are your paper, your manuscript will be in, rejected easily, right? Because you don't know the convention of uh, abstract writing. Right, I have received some manuscripts, right, with diff uh, many uh, uh, abstract with many different paragraphs, right. So you know, uh, I, I may be a bit too long, right. So abstract that are too long or maybe even too short, right, might result in the paper this rejection. This rejection means it is it can be rejected by the editor or the editorial team. And you know, without being sent to reviewers, right? And you know, quality and conformity to stated aims and scope, right? Okay. So you know, before you submit your paper to any journals, right? Look at aim and scope of the journal. Do they accept the papers in the field that you are doing research on, right? For example, if you are doing something about second language writing or second language listening, right? You believe in second language acquisition, but you know, if you submit your papers to a journal called Asian Englishers that have different beliefs, right? They, they have different beliefs, different concepts, right? to hold, right? So maybe, you know, they are going to reject your paper very easily. Or, you know, some, some journals, right? Some journals have very specific uh, audience, right? For example, some journals call uh, second language writing, right? Uh, they accept only papers related to L2 writing, right? They, they, you, can, you can show some, some uh, connection between writing and maybe listening, I don't know, right? That might be accepted, right? But you know, if your paper has nothing to do with writing, it doesn't fit the aim and scope of the journal. And this may result in this rejection, right? 
and readability of articles. I mean, you know, whether or not the articles are well written, does it contain grammatical errors, right? Okay. And sightedness, scopus, right? Uh, they care a lot about sightedness, about sight score, right? So um, they, they look at, you know, the performance of the journal before they get the journal indexed in scopus, right? Uh, how many, how many uh, citation is the journal, uh, does the journal receive, right? Something like that, right? They, they look at only uh, citation in Scopus. For example, before Learn Journal, right? We are talking ab about Learn Journal that I'm the editor of, right, today. So, to, right? So, before Learn Journal got accepted to be included in Scopus, right? Uh, the Scopus looked at our site score, right? They, they look at the citations that we have had so far. Uh, something like that. And the, the, the citation must be in Scopus. They don't count the citation in, in other uh, databases like Google Scholar, right? No. And editor standing, right? Or I mean, all the editors in the editorial board must, must, must be scholars in the field. They cannot be, you know, nobody, right? They, they can be someone, you know, when, when you see their name, right? You know for sure that, okay, they are, they are the, 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 the people or the scholars in, in uh, second language acquisition, for example, or in uh, TESOL, Interfol, something like that, right? And this is very important, no delay in publication schedule, right? If you claim to have three issues per year, it must be uh, issued, I mean, it must, must be published on time, right? right? You cannot be even late for one day, right? So, so you know, you are going to be punished by Scorpus, right? So this is regularity, okay? And the content must be available online. So right now, right, all the con, all the For the readers, but you have to purchase, or maybe you, you need to read uh, via the database of your university, right? You, the university usually subscribe for these databases, right? And uh, they must have English language journal homepage, right? So that you know, this can access uh, wider readership and the quality of homepage, right? You know, I mean, it must look good, right? Has submission system and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so what I have just shared with you are just introduction, right? They are, uh, you know, it is introduction to Scopus and how Scopus select journals, right? So when, when you look at Scopus, right? When, when you look at Scopus website, you usually, you know, you can access Scopus website, right? But make sure that, you know, you log in using your university password as a lecturer or as a student. Right. Otherwise, you cannot you cannot have access to Scopus website. I mean, the full version. Right. So now I'm going to share with you some publication opportunities. Right. Uh, I, 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 I am aware that, um, you know, most of you who are joining us today. Right. Uh, thank you very much. You are from around the world. Right. OK. And, you know, uh, I, I know that uh, sometimes you know the time difference can 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 be a, a bit a problem for you, right? But thank you for joining us anyway, right? So I think our related fields are language education, right? No matter whether it's TESOL, ELT, TEFL, TESO, or whatsoever, applied linguistics, or even linguistics, right? Language and communication and translation and so on and so forth, right? So okay, I would like to introduce some journals in our fields that you know uh, you should know and maybe you can you can find your opportunity right you can seize your opportunity uh, of uh, submitting your manuscript to right so you know I'm I, I'm divide, I, I'm going to divide the Scopus journals into two kinds international journals and Scopus Thai Scopus journals right but first of all before we talk about that, right? Let me talk about the quartiles. There are four quartiles uh, 
ranked by Scopus. So you know any any journals indexed in Scopus, right? If they have been indexed in Scopus for uh, at least two years, they must be they must appear in one of the four quartiles, right? Um, or maybe you know they may appear in more than one quartile. I'm I'm got I'm gonna talk about that soon, right? So this is category of scientific journal that shows their credibility. So you know the quartile is associated with the uh, citation, right? The more citation a journal has, the higher quartile it is ranked in, right? So you know when we talk about quartile, you can take a look at the website of Saimaku Journal Ranking. This is powered by Scopus, is sponsored by Scopus, right? So you, you, you can just enter the word language and linguistics, right? So you can access all the journals in language and linguistics, or maybe education, or whatsoever that you are interested in, right? So the citation rate, this is a very important factor, right? And this is used in journal ranking, right? In quartile ranking. If the author is cited, right? It means the article is important and has an impact in its field, right? So, so that's why, you know, Scopus uh, pays attention to citation, right? Citation, uh, you know, don't get confused. Uh, 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 between, don't, don't get confused between size score and impact factor. I, I think you know some of you might be familiar with the term impact factor. Scopus doesn't have impact factor. Impact factor belongs to Web of Science, which is another camp, right? So you know there are two major camps in publication. Scopus is on the, you know, yeah, on the, the one side and on the other, you know, stands Web of Science or Thomson Reuters ISI, right? So, you know, they they use the term impact factor, right? Scopus doesn't have impact, fact, impact factor. They have size score and the size score are spelled out in four quartiles, right? And usually, you know, a high quartile in Scopus means that the journal sets research trends and the authors are expert in that field. So, okay. Q1 is the best, Q1 is the highest, while Q4 is the lowest, right? So, so you know, if you are newcomers in our field, you may try Q4 journal first, right? But, but you know, if you are professional writers, if you are uh, experts, maybe you can try Q1 or Q2 stop us journals, right? So it depends on your, on your uh, passion and on your motivation, right? Okay, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there are some universities like uh, Konkan University uh, that, um, uh, you know, they, they, they have set that regulation that, you know, PhD students, especially in international programs, must get their papers based on that PhD dissertation published in Scopus Journal, right? So, so you, you, uh, this, this sounds very challenging, right? But it's worth a try, right? So, you know, the most reputable journals, according to Scopus, uh, belong to the first two quartiles, Q1 and Q2, right? Yeah, uh, Q1 is better than Q2, right? But actually, you know, to me, I, I mean, for new researchers, if you can get your papers published in any quartiles of Scopus journal, it's good enough. Right, and it's a good starting point. And of course, Q1 is much more difficult than Q3 and Q4, right? Okay, so you understand about Q. So, you know, if you are researchers in the field or if you are PhD students, right, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that you have been reading a lot. You have been citing a lot uh, from these journals, right? And, you know, uh, uh, I'm showing you the titles of the journals in, in the following quartiles, right? For example, the best one in the fields of applied linguistic and English language teaching. Uh, I mean, this is the recent, the most recent statistics, right? The, the highest, you know, this is in the, like the cream of the crop. The highest in quartile is modern language journal, right? So, you know, if once in a lifetime, you can publish your papers in this journal is, you know, uh, it means, you know, you should be proud of this, 
right? Studies in second language acquisition, apply linguistic, TESOL quarterly, right? Uh, this is a very old, you know, well established journal system, right? Sometimes, you know, the title of the journal can be a misnomer, right? It can be misleading because, you know, when I first heard about system, I thought that it would be something related to science, right? Or engineering or physics, but no, right? It is <laughs> language system or language testing or English for specific purposes, right? These are, you know, high rank journals, right? But maybe, you know, if you have been publishing a lot, right, in our field, maybe you can try these journals, right? But the turnaround time would be very high. Turnaround time mean, uh, you know, since you submit the paper and you get the feedback and you revise the feedback and you resubmit or you get it back to the editor and you revise again and again until your papers is published, right? It may take you like two to three years, right? I mean, the whole turnaround time, right? Because you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of, uh, you know, researchers submitting their manuscript to these very well-known reputable journals. Uh, okay. Uh, these are also in quartile one, but they are uh, some of them, many of them are published in, in Asia. So, you know, I, I, you can see more Asian names as authors, right? So, so you know, this is uh, my own observation, right? Okay, if you are capable enough, you can publish in TESOL quarterly or whatsoever. But if you want to increase your opportunity, right? You want to seize your day, seize your opportunity. There are many other Q1 journals that maybe it, it would be less challenging, uh, right? Less difficult, right? And you know, I have seen some of us, I mean, some of our colleagues in the field in, in Thailand and in many other Asian countries can get their, their papers published in these journals like Asian Englishes, right, okay? If you are in the field of global Englishes or ELF, ELF, you can try these journals, right? I have seen Thai scholars publish their works here from time to time. You can try RELC journal from Singapore, but this one is quite difficult, right? But, but you know, uh, some colleagues of mine manage to get published in this journal, right? Or you can try 3L, language, linguistic, and literature, right? So, you know, this one includes papers in linguistics, applied linguistics, language teaching, literature, right? And they accept both in uh, English and Malay, right? Okay. And, or maybe you can try the Journal of Asia TEFL. This is another old journal, right, by the organization called Asia TEFL. And this is a good journal. Right, and the rejection rate is quite quite high, right? Or another sister journal of 3L is called Gemma or like Journal of Language Studies. Uh, please know that for some journals like Gemma, they are indexed in both Q1 and Q2. Why? You can take a look at Q, you can look it up in Saimako website, and you can see different colors, right? Uh, for example, uh, green represent Q1, Yellow is Q2, orange is Q3, and red is Q4, right? But you know, for one particular journal, for one single journal, right? It might be ranked in more than one quartile, especially if it's an interdisciplinary one. For example, for Gemma, right? Uh, they are ranked, uh, I, mean, I mean, you know, it is ranked Q1 in literature, but Q2 in language study, something like that, right? So, you know, you have to, you, you, you can take a look, right? Some universities, they are generous, right? Like Thammasat University. If teachers at Thammasat University can get published in any journals indexed in Scorpus, and if that particular journal is indexed in more than one quartile, they allow for the highest one, right? So uh, quite generous, okay? Or maybe you can try quartile two. If you think quartile one is too difficult for you at this time, maybe you can be a bit less ambitious and you say, okay, now I can look for Q2, right? Q2. Now, uh, language testing in Asia. Maybe, you know, if you are from Indonesia or, you know, some student of mine, right? Some of my colleagues, right? Uh, publish their papers in Indonesian Journal Applied Linguistics. This is another good, strong journal, right? called EJ, 
Asian e EFL Journal, Asian ESP Journal, and TSOL International Journal. These three journals are sister journals, and they are published by the same organization from the Philippines, I think. And you know, sometimes you know, if you publish at, uh, sorry, if you if you make your oral presentation at one of the conferences that they organize, right? They would also select some papers and publish those, right? But you know, you can even submit your uh, manuscripts without presenting at all, right? And the screening process would be a bit long, right? Yeah, some of my colleagues from Jualongkorn University submitted his paper to Asian ESP Journal, right? And it kept him waiting for about five months to know the, uh, I mean, the review results, the comments of the reviewer. And then altogether, it took him like eight or nine months to, to pass the reviewing process. And it means to get accepted, right? But even though he got accepted, it took him it, 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 it took him around 14 months, 14 more months to see it published, right? So, yeah, appear in, in the journal. So you know, you know, for for very uh, well-known journals, right? They have you have to be in the queue, right? Or maybe you can try electronic journal foreign language teaching. This is another good journal uh, by uh, National University of Singapore, right? I think it's is from the same place as RELC, right? Or if you think the first two quartiles are out of reach for you now, right? Maybe you can you can step a bit down to quartile three, which means you have more opportunity to get your papers published, right? You can try Journal of English as an international language, right? Or research in applied linguistic. I think the second one is published in Iran, in Iran, right? Journal of English Studies. This one is uh, published uh, by a university in Spain. Um, the last one, International Journal of Communication and Linguistic Studies from the United States, right? Or maybe you, you can try Q4 journals, right? There are many Q4 journals. It doesn't mean that they are not good, but maybe they are new journals or they have just been uh, newly added to Scopus. For example, writing and pedagogy, of course, right? For a journal whose title is writing and pedagogy, don't, don't submit anything like uh, phonetics and phonology or semantics and have any, any papers that have no connection with writing and teaching, right? Because it's going to waste your time, right? Maybe you have to wait for a few months to know that they got rejected right away, right? but it, it takes the editor's time to come to your paper and reject it, right? Or Teflin, Teflin is another good journal. Teflin, uh, you know, this is the name of an organization like uh, TESOL, you know, in Thailand, we have Thailand TESOL, right? In Malaysia, uh, they have Melta, right? In, in Korea, they are South Korea, they have Ko TESOL. Yeah, in Japan, they have Jolt. And you know, in a similar vein, in Indonesia, I think you have Teflin, right? And you know, this is one of the best uh, organization and oldest organizations, yeah, related to Tefo. And you know, they have their journals, right? Uh, right. This is a very good journal, yeah. And it got indexed in Scopus, I think, maybe a year or half a year, yeah, before learn, right? Or you can try International Journal of Assessment and Evaluation if you are a language testing person, right? This one is uh, far uh, easier. Yeah, I mean, relatively easier compared with language testing, right? Or language testing in Asia, okay? So, you know, these are some examples of international Scopus journals in our fields, right? So, let me introduce some journals in Thailand. Why Thailand? Because you know, uh, right now there are many more journals in Thailand that are indexed in Scopus, and I have, you know, I have to uh, express my deep appreciation to Thailand Journal Citation Index or TCI uh, that uh, started the project that that is called Fast Track. And you know, Fast Track mean it doesn't mean that the journals are not good, but you know, the journals were considered right by, by the local board 
before it was considered by by you know the board of Scorpus, right, in the Netherlands, and then it got indexed in Scorpus, right. So you know, so far there are a lot more journals that you can publish your papers in Thailand, right. I think the first one that uh, maybe you should be aware of is the CESA, Journal of Social Science. It has been indexed in Scopus for a long, long time, and it has a very good system, submission system, and the editorial team is very capable, very efficient, right? Uh, I mean, the review time would be like two or three months. You can even suggest or propose reviewers, but they might not choose the reviewers that you propose, right? It's indexed in Q2. Right. So don't get confused. Right. Look at its website. There would be two versions. That says a journal of science. That's for those who are in pure science, like physics, biology, whatever. Right. And you know, on the other hand, they have journal. That says a journal of social science. And you know, this is interdisciplinary. They welcome uh, articles in many different fields, business sociology, history, literature, including applied linguistics and language teaching, right? So you can try, right? You can try, but some journals would charge you, right? Because it's a journal, it's gonna charge you like 3,000 baht, right? 3,000 baht for, I mean, all the authors would be charged for processing fee. ABAC journal, of course, uh, ABAC journal is a very old journal, right? Uh, and very, uh, uh, it has very good performance, right? And you know, for Cassesa Journal, ABAC Journal, and the other tools that I'm gonna introduce to you, they are open access. So it means you can browse through the content easily, right? You know, anyone can can take a look at the papers free of charge, right? You can try ABAC, right? Uh, if you know ABAC, you might think that because ABAC is famous for marketing and business administration. So some of you might think that they won't accept papers in language studies, but actually they do, right? They do. I have from time to time uh, seen uh, articles in our fields in ELT, in applied linguistic published in this journal. You can try Manuseya at Jula, right? Journal of Humanities. And you know, they, this is also another interdisciplinary journal, right? They accept papers in many different fields, right? In, in humanities, philosophy, literature, linguistics, geography, history, so on and so forth. You can take a look at the AMN school, right? Okay, uh, but I personally know the editors, right? The editor-in-chief, nah, uh, and you know, she said, uh, if you are writing the papers in language teaching, right, uh, please, submit it to some other journals because you know uh, it doesn't fit it doesn't seem to fit the aim and scope much right they would they would consider something that is more on uh, linguistics or maybe apply linguistics first before uh, they take a look at right uh, something that is related to language teaching right so so some uh, if you are not so sure what should you do? I would suggest that you write an email to the editor. I mean, I mean, if you read the aim and scope, sometimes the aim and scope is very short, right? And then sometimes they say, we accept paper in the following fields, one, two, three, four, five, and then et cetera. So we, we never know what is included in et cetera, right? So if you are not so sure, and if you don't want to waste your time submitting your manuscript to any journals, right? I would suggest that you, write to the editor. But if they are too busy, maybe it may take him or her some time to get you back, right? Or you may try HAS. This is another good journal by Silapakon University. HAS stands for Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences Studies. Okay. So look at the AMAN school. HAS and Manusia are similar, right? There are many overlapping fields between the two journals, right? But at least, you know, in they are in the fields. And I have seen some papers in language study, in teaching, in literature, published in Haas, right? But please note that Manusaya and Haas, you know, Manusaya got indexed in Scopus, 
first uh i think uh, maybe in the year 2000 maybe 2019 maybe in january I'm, I'm, if i'm not wrong right has came later that that's why you know any, any journals any journals in the world that have been indexed in Scopus for at least two years. They haven't been assigned quartile soon, right? That's why you know they don't have quartile. So this is something that you have to be aware of. Some universities give you reward, right? I mean, they give you like incentive, but you know, from their uh, regulation of the university, they say, uh, I mean, the journals that you publish your papers in must be, must appear in one of the four quartiles. So if you publish in the journals that have that uh, have no quartile at this time, chances are you are in language education. So you know this is our specific field, language education, applied linguistics. We have PASA, yeah. To the best of my knowledge, PASA seems to be the oldest in our field, published by Chulalongkorn University Language Institute or Kuli, right? All of you should know Kuli, right? The, the oldest language in journals, I, I mean, uh, PASA journal, right? Because, you know, they have, you know, very beautiful archives, right? And it looks very valuable. Uh, I mean, starting from, you know, the time like 40 years ago, when everything was maybe typed using typewriter, something like that, right? New kid to the block, right? We are the youngest, right, of all the three journals, right? And we got indexed in Scopus for the second, right? LEARN stands for Language Education and Acquisition Research Network, right? And, you know, we welcome papers written in English, right? Both research papers academic papers, but, but you know, we would prefer research papers, right? You have methodology, you have findings, discussion of the findings, something like that, right? We welcome, you, you can take a look at our website and it's free of charge. Uh, we, the aim and scope is something like language education, language uh, acquisition, language testing, ELF, right? language planning and language policy, and even all, all fields of applied linguistics, right? If you have papers related to our aim and scope, you can try. And then, you know, uh, this is another good journals published by KMUTT, uh, reflections, right? So, you know, you can see the acronym EFL, right? English as a foreign language. So, you know, this is like, you know, wordplay. Right, wordplay that is quite catchy, right? So you know these are, but but these are the three, you know, best journals in language education in Thailand, and we are now waiting to be assigned quartile soon, maybe this year, uh, maybe maybe June or July this year. Uh, Learn journal, for example, should be assigned uh, Q4, right? Quartile four, right? Uh, okay, this is very important, right? I would like to. Uh, raise your awareness, right? When you choose a journal, look at the aim and scope, right? If your, if your paper gets rejected, I mean, maybe a month or two after you submit to any journal, maybe it doesn't mean that your paper is not good enough, but it doesn't fit the aim and scope. For example, I once received a paper uh, about learning, learning uh, social science with no implication to language study, with no implication to ELT at all. Maybe the paper is good, but it doesn't match the aim and scope of the journal. So, you know, as an editor, I have to reject it, right? Or maybe, you know, you wrote something, you, you are a linguist, yeah. Let's say you are a phonetician and you know what you have been doing, right? You, the research that you are doing is something that is about, uh, Thai linguistics or theoretical linguistics. So don't, don't waste your time submitting those papers to apply linguistics journal, right? Because you know, it's beyond the advanced goal, right? Despite the fact that your paper is very good, right? Uh, I, would, I would suggest that you, if you are not so sure about the content 
or or anything any possibilities that the journal would would take right whether or not you know my paper is related to the aim and scope right you can look at the current issues or archives in the archives that are the past issues sometimes they use the word archives sometimes they use the word past issues right so you can take a look and browse right uh, you know, if there are open access journal, you can even take a look at the content, right? The abstract, the content, right? If they if they publish papers in a similar field to what you are studying, to what you are doing research on, you may feel more comfortable submitting your manuscript to them, right? Okay, but but you know sometimes uh, if you browse and you you see that oh maybe you know. It's like you are in another field, right? Maybe you have to withdraw yourself from, from that journal, right? Okay. For, for example, uh, that, that I, I came across a journal. I, can, I, I cannot remember the title, but it's like Chinese linguistics, right? And, and, and I, I browsed through the journals and I have found that, oh my gosh, right? This is the journals specifically designed for uh, those who are doing research in Chinese linguistics. So if you are doing something like Thai linguistics, English linguistics, right, your paper would not be welcomed, right? Because, you know, from, from the archives that I have looked at, right, everything is related to Chinese linguistics or maybe dialects, right? Okay, turn around time. This is something that you have to take into your consideration as well because uh, many good journals, they have... Uh, you know, the take around time is quite long, maybe a year or more than that, right? Uh, especially if you are going, if you want to graduate. So let's say, you know, you are PhD students and, you know, you are required to get published, right? Maybe the turnaround time would be too long and you cannot wait. Maybe they say, you know, eight months and you say, oh no, I want to get it done in six months, right? Um, from my experience, right, you should, you should prepare your manuscript and you should have time for publication, right? If you have like two or three months, that's not sufficient, right? From my experience, you should have more than, more than seven or eight months if you want to make sure that your paper appears in Scopus journals, right? Okay, because you know, they take time, not because the journal is not efficient, but because there are so many, so many, uh, people interested in submitting their manuscript to the journals. Publication frequency is another thing that should be considered, right? Uh, if a journal published only once, but, but right now there are not many journals in the world that publish only once, right? But if they publish only once, and you know, for each issue, right? Number four and number five, they are together, right? If the publication frequency is low, like once in a year, right? And they publish only very low number of articles per issue. You should avoid uh, submitting your papers there because maybe, you know, it may take time, right? Uh, some journals that I have come across, right? They publish only once, uh, right, annually. And, you know, they publish only five or six articles. So, so, you know, it means uh, this is going to reduce your chance to get published in, maybe you have to wait for years, right? And maybe you may consider publication fee, submission fee, some journals have both, right? You, you know, once you submit, you have to pay first, maybe 1,000 baht, 2,000 baht, 3,000 baht, and this amount will never be returned to you no matter whether you will be able to get it published or not. But you know, uh, some journals charge only publication fee, right? On the condition that you got accepted and you wish to publish with them, they are going to charge you, right? There are different rates, right? Some, some would charge you like 100 USD, 200 USD, 
or even 300 USD. But some journals, right? Right now, there are some journals like Asian EFL Journal, Asian ESP Journal that uh, offer premium lane, right? But they charge quite a lot. They say, okay, if you don't want to wait for a long time, right, money can be a solution. I mean, you can choose the premium lane if you are happy to pay 800 USD. This is written very clearly on the website of the journal, right? But if you think it's too much, you can choose some other journals, right? And look at the database, right? Right now, there are many journals that claim itself, right? They claim themselves to be indexed in, you know, numbers of, a, a number of uh, databases. But you have to look at the databases, right? Maybe you know there are there are databases that nobody knows, or you have never heard of before, right? These these are called you know low low rank database, or maybe some would even say they are fake database, right? Or questionable database, right? Yeah, yeah. So so you know don't get misled by the databases that are not very well known, right? Just look at something like Scopus, Web of Science, or even ERIC. ERIC is good enough, right? It, but, but you know, the, but maybe it's not as prestigious as Scopus. Uh, for example, right, when you look at journal like Learn Journal, right, uh, you can see uh, information like that. Uh, Current, usually, you know, the first page would be, you know, the current issue, right? As you can click archives, there are some announcements that the editors want to communicate with you. Editorial team, this is the name of people in the editorial board in our fields. And then ethical standards, you can learn about the ethical standards of the journal. And then, you know, when you click about, you can access the aim and scope, like, you know, we, 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 we welcome papers in second language acquisition and education, testing and assessment, ESP, EAP, ELF, apply linguistic. This is quite broad, right? Uh, teacher train, training and PD, right? Professional development, language planning, language policy, innovations in ELT, and so on and so forth, right? Okay. And you know, um, many journals, they, they also have the in, index like this, right? Yeah, good journals uh, doesn't, it, that, uh, that, it doesn't mean that the good journals will need to have a lot of uh, databases to, be, to appear, right, to appear, right? Uh, for example, Learn Journal is included in ERIC, in Scopus, in ASEAN Citation Index or ACI. And of course, in uh, the, the first tier, tier one of TCI, right? Okay, in the future, we want to be included in more uh, acceptable databases. But now you might ask me, right now, you know, there are many topics. Some topics are out, some topics are still trendy, right? What are the hot topics that I, I should do research on Right, because you know, if you are obsessed with some old topics, right, uh, or, or the topics that have been have been uh, researched too much, right, or we can say over researched, right. So chances are your paper might be rejected easily because you know it's not very interesting, despite the fact that your research design is good, your research findings are maybe interesting, right. If the if the topic is out, right, maybe that may uh, lead to this rejection. So I have summarized these hot topics, right? Yeah, in the past three years, right? I looked at many journals in our fields from the first queue to the fourth queue, right? And I have found that these are the hot topics. And you know, some topics are even suggested by British Council, right? Yeah, for, for you know, any researchers to pursue, right? Right now, you know, you can do something like mobile learning, gamification, right? It's very trendy, especially right now, mobile learning, right? During the COVID time, right? Uh, mobile learning would be more and more uh, interesting, right? And people need this. ELF or ELF and global Englishers, world Englishers, this is still, you know, in the recent trend of research. Right, multiliteracies and trans-languaging, right? In the past, people 
focus on sociolinguistic, paying attention to code switching, right? Uh, right now, you know, they pay more attention to multiliteracy, multilingualism related to language education and translanguaging, right? Yeah, maybe using L1 in teaching English, for example, and CEFR when it comes to language testing. CFR is still very popular. It's still a hot topic, right? Not just in Thailand and in many other countries, in Europe, in many Asian countries, right? They focus a lot on CFR. Blended learning, yeah, it has been in the trend for, for several years and it's still right now. Flipped classroom, right? Learner autonomy. Learner autonomy is not a new topic, right? But learner autonomy is still um, being researched. Right. Or maybe you want to do something about innovation in research methods, right? Or innovation in ELT. You may you you may do research on this, right? Okay, these are examples of hot topics, right? That you may take into your consideration when you do your research. Ah. Next. Okay, now. Uh, this is the, the last thing that I would like to share with you. Top 10 reasons for journal rejection, right? I, I, I talked to some of my friends nah, and, and you know, she said, oh, uh, Ajahn, Yi, Ajahn Supakorn, it sounds very scary, but you know, I, I, I don't want to intimidate you, but you know, if you are well aware of the, the, the reasons why, why this rejection can, can occur, right? You can avoid, right? You can avoid so that your paper will not uh, be in the same trouble like this. Okay, I, uh, I, I and Dr. Willie Renanya, yeah, from Singapore, right? Uh, have co-authored a short paper appearing in his website called Top reasons for journal rejection. Actually, there are like 13 or 14 reasons, but I have uh, shortlisted, right? I have selected only 10 reasons to share with you. Can you think of any common reasons why, uh, why your paper gets rejected? Maybe, you know, there are two steps. If the paper is obviously uh, inadequate or bad, right? It will be rejected outright by the editorial team or the editor. This is called desk rejection. But you know, if the paper looks a bit okay, it would be sent out to at least two reviewers. I say at least because some, some journals, they don't pay the reviewers and they recruit the, 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 the reviewers wildly. So maybe, you know, if you are very unlucky, you might receive comments from five reviewers, right? That's possible, right? Okay, so maybe, you know, you might be rejected by reviewers, right? It means you doesn't pass the major review process, okay? So can you think of any reason, right? Let me share with you the first one. Uh, poor fit between your paper and the journal, right? Actually, I talked about this earlier, right? Some of you, uh, don't study aims and scope of the journal, right? And you just submit it to. So, so, you know, I remember very well a few years ago, right? I got a paper about Chinese literature, right? Chinese literature. And, you know, the authors wanted to publish in Learn Journal. So, so you know, we, we, we cannot publish uh, anything that is beyond our aim and scope. Uh, uh, so, so you have to be very careful. Yeah, as I said, if you are not so sure, um, Write, write to the editor, right? Write to the editor. Okay. And data topics, right? Yeah, uh, you know, opposite to the hot topics, some topics are very, very dated, right? So, so you, should, you should avoid doing research on this. It doesn't mean that these topics are, are not very good at all, but it has been thoroughly researched, right? Like sentence level error analysis, this, you know, error analysis used to be very popular and, you know, widely accepted in 80s and 90s, but not right now. Or schema theory in reading uh, education, right? You know, when you teach reading, you teach, uh, you believe in schema, this is something old, or integrative motivation. So, you know, any topics that are out, uh, you know, would, would, would make your paper get rejected easily, right? 
and the data references. This is very important, right? Uh, when you write your paper, you can cite, of course, you can cite anything. You can cite as or references as you want. For example, if you are doing research in collocation, right, multi-word units, you can, you can cite JR first, 1957. But you know, that would be only one among a few that is very dated, right? But you know, uh, you have to cite the recent research studies. This is to show that uh, you have, uh, you, you keep yourself updated, right? You keep abreast of the most recent research trend. For example, if you want to submit your paper to Scopus Journal this year, 2021, your literature review should include studies that were published last year, 2020, 2019, something like that, right? If it, it stopped as 2014, 2015, right? It means, you know, you haven't updated. You, 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 you don't have access to updated uh, right, references, right? So uh, I and Professor Willie Renanya uh, have found that if, you know, most of the references that are dated or maybe, you know, they are published like 20 years ago, if you have quite a lot of these references, right, this can result in this rejection as well. So please be careful. Right? Don't include anything that is too old. You can include some classic work, right? Some classic work, but maybe only a few, right? And poor language quality. So any manuscript that contains language errors, no matter whether they are grammatical mistakes, typographical mean misspelling, right? Incorrect word choice, lack of paragraph coherence, run on sentences or whatever, right? This can result in this rejection, right? Don't, don't submit your first draft to the journal, right? It's going to be a waste of your time, right? Once you come up with your first draft, ask your colleague to comment on the content, right? Because, you know, once we finish the first draft, maybe, you know, that's just the first version and it's not the best one, right? So ask the colleagues, ask your teachers, ask anyone who are in the same field, to read and to give you some comments so that you can revise the content, okay? After that, ask your friends, maybe your friend who speak L1 English, right? I, I'm not saying that uh, everyone who speaks L1 English can edit your work, right? It can be anyone whose English is, whose academic English uh, is acceptable, right? Yeah, but, but usually, you know, it would be any excellent uh, editor. There would be some editor or some editing service center that can offer you, right? And this, is, this should not be too expensive, right? Yeah, maybe ask them to help you. And maybe, you know, um, you have to pay them, right? Maybe you need some grant or maybe you have some financial uh, support, right? Maybe, uh, maybe, you know, you have to ask, ask them twice. Right, the first time to read, right, read, read uh, after you have revised the contents based on your colleagues' feedback, right? You ask your friends, maybe he's American or New Zealander, Canadian, to have a look and edit. And uh, okay, at least now you get a very good manuscript ready to submit. After Let's say, you know, your, your paper gets accepted or maybe they say, okay, we will accept if you revise. You need to come back and revise. Maybe revise means you have to add something, delete something, rewrite some part. And after that, before you submit it, submit the revised version to the journal, ask the same editor, ask the same your personal editing person to edit it, right? So, so you know, you you cannot be you cannot be too economical, right? So uh, maybe you you have to invest, right? You have to invest, right? So this editor must read at least twice, right? Okay, don't submit the first draft. Some people uh, have misunderstanding, you know, because you know I often uh, exchange opinions with many writers or many colleagues of mine, and they say, oh when you submit it to a journal, just submit 
our version, right? We are English teachers, we are university lecturers, right? So our language should be good enough. But you know, maybe, right? Uh, that there may be something like some incorrect word choice or some uh, minor grammatical errors that make your manuscript looks unprofessional, right? Or maybe, you know, if it contains a lot more errors than you imagine, this can even block understanding of the reviewers, right? Believe me, right? It, it will be rejected very easily. So, so please be careful about uh, the language quality. I think that some language, some, some journals right now, right? They even offer uh, editing service, right? Uh, I, I don't think they want to make money out of you, but maybe they want to, you know, make it convenient and make sure that your paper has been thoroughly edited before they got they get published, right? Number five, okay, non-compliance of journal guidelines. So this is very important. Read and carefully read and follow the author guidelines. So you know, right now, including learn journals, almost all the journals, right, in the world, in the website. Right, after you read the submission guidelines, the author guidelines, right, there would be one section on uh, article style sheet template, right? So what can you do with that? You read, you understand, and to make sure that you conform to the guidelines strictly, you can download the template and you can type your text. Or maybe, you know, if, if you have your manuscript in your own Word file, you can copy and paste. Make sure guidelines strictly, right? Right. So, so, you know, this is going to facilitate editors, right? It doesn't guarantee at all that your paper will get accepted, right? But if they say, please use our guideline, you have to, right? If you submit your paper using your own uh, version of style sheet template, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe they, they, they can reject your paper. Uh, okay, you can still hear me, right? Okay. Uh, so the, the first thing that you have to do, if you are interested in any journal, you can download the style sheet template, right? So it means, it means you have written your paper first, right? And you have your paper, uh, you know, type in your Microsoft Word file. And after that, you copy your text and paste it neatly, carefully in article style sheet template, right? I think more than 85% of journals around the world require authors to use the article template provided by the, by the journal, right? Okay, these guidelines are available in the journal website, right? Okay, if you don't comply with the journal author's guideline, right, chances are you might get rejected. Right, uh, weak literature. Okay, uh, this is something that is interesting. The literature review, uh, you know, don't write too much. Some some people write too much literature review for the article, or especially graduate students. They they transfer all the information they have from their thesis or dissertation. Don't do that, right? So it's not expected. Uh, but the literature should not be too weak, right? Uh, Ha, ha, ha. What is expected by the editor? When the editor look at your literature, right? Maybe you know there are many ways. You can, you can separate between introduction and literature, or you can even merge them, right? I have seen many good journals like TSOL Quarterly or System. Maybe you know they have merged them. Everything is put under introduction, or maybe they have very short introduction. And then they avoid using the word literature review because it looks not very professional. I don't know, right? Some journals don't, don't want the word literature review. They just want only the word, the, the theories that you are citing, the theories that you are using for your study, right? But whatsoever, right? You should have a sound theoretical framework and then a synthesis of relevant past research studies. So that, that must be two components, right? Theory, theory related to what you are doing research on, and then you have to review 
previous studies, right? Review the findings, the research instrument that they use, something like that. And what, what, what you cannot miss is after you have reviewed literature, right? You need to present a critical research gap. What is the research gap that your present study aimed to bridge, right? What is the research gap that your study was conducted to close, right? This is very, very, very important, right? Okay. Uh -huh. uh, usually, right, you can highlight the gap somewhere after literature before you present your research questions, right? Okay, the research question can be presented explicitly, or maybe it can be included as part of the text. It, it depends. It depends on the convention of the journal, right? How can you know this? Look at the articles published in that particular journal, right? Maybe you know they have to follow the same, more or less the same uh, format. Okay. Number seven. Yeah, seven and six are closely related. Poor research question can result in this rejection, right? So, you know, if your research question are poorly worded, poorly worded, there are two, two ways of poorly worded. Number one, it is ungrammatical, right? You know, sometimes this is embarrassing, right? If you submit your research paper to a journal, it, can, it may contain some grammatical errors, right? But if the research question contain grammatical error, this will be the, the thing that stand out because you know, this is what the editors and reviewers will look at first, right? Okay, or maybe the research questions are not clear. They are not clearly written, right? They contain no error at all, but you know, I mean, they are not very readable. A good research question should reflect researchers' deep understanding of literature and a real gap. So, you know, when you, prom when you propose to do your research, right, you should highlight or state the real research gap, right? And the research gap is usually what you get from your own synthesis, from the knowledge that you have got from reviewing the literature. And you think that, okay, this is the area that still needs, it still needs response or answers, right? Okay. Yeah. So this is very important. If you don't present any research gap, right? Uh, maybe you know this is this can this can be one of the reasons why your paper gets rejected. And research design, right? I I, I think that uh, for those of you who are PhD holders, right, and if you have experience of being examiners, right, PhD student uh, supervisor, for example. Uh, this is related to chapter three. It's derived from chapter three, right? This is what editors and reviewers look for, right? They look for good research design, right? Yeah, for example, if, if you claim to do quantitative studies, right? They are going to look at the accuracy of the statistic that you apply. Yeah, did you use ANOVA? Did you use T-test? Did you, did you choose the, the right statistic for your study? Something like that, right? If you claim that your study is a qualitative one, maybe they look at the way you code the data. Did you code the data systematically? Did you uh, provide the information or the context of the study clearly? Something like that, right? So this is what they are looking at, right? Or for example, right? If you are doing experimental study, because you know, experimental design is very, very common if you want to measure or assess effectiveness of a teaching method, right? Uh, some PhD students often do this, right? At least maybe you need two groups, right? One being treatment, uh, treatment group or experimental group, and the other being control groups. And they got, uh, I mean, they took pre and post test, something like that. If you had only one group, right, maybe this will in this will in decrease the effectiveness of your findings. I mean, it, it may it may make your findings less convincing, right? And you know, good journals like Q1 or Q2. Maybe they don't accept these designs, right? Okay, it depends, right? It depends because you know, if if you want to submit to your paper to Q1 journals, 
make sure that your paper is good enough in terms of research design because you have other competitors, right? And you know, they can choose. Yeah, these, these good journals are very picky, choosy, right? They, they, they have a lot of things they can select, right? So, so make sure that the research design is good enough, okay? Yeah, usually, you know, uh, if you are doing your PhD study, I'm not much concerned about this because it takes time and, you know, they have been guided, right? They have been guided very well by supervisors, right? But if you are new researchers in your field, or if you think, okay, I want to get it done quickly, maybe, you know, you cannot get it published in good scopus journals. And number nine, this is a classic question, right? A classic one. New researchers, right? And graduate students, they often run into uh, this problem because uh, maybe they, they don't know how to discuss adequately. Some of them knows only they show the tables based on the data they get, right? They use statistics, they show the statistics, but they don't know how to discuss the finding because, you know, many, many PhD students, right? Many graduate students that I know, they think that to discuss the finding is to present the result, which is not at all the case, right? So you need to discuss the finding. You should make clear, highlight the main findings from your study and let the readers know, right? I mean, uh, what is new? What, what, what is the new knowledge that people can have from reading your work, right? What are the findings? What are the new findings? How can your work contribute to the field of your study? Something like that, okay? And uh, I would suggest that, uh, okay, you should show a relationship between your findings and those from the previous studies, right? Maybe, you know, support your, findings using literature that you have reviewed and cite distinguished scholars, right? So, so if you are doing something uh, like this, oops, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Okay, so if, if you are doing your research, right, in vocabulary, for example, you need to cite big names like Paul Nation, Norbert Schmidt, right? So, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, unavoidable, right? So, you know, this is something that editors or reviewers in the field, right? So one thing that you have to bear in mind, those who are editors, they are in the same field as you, as yours, right? So if you are vocabulary researchers, Maybe, right, the, the one who, who review your paper are in the same field, right? And they know, right, they know a lot. And maybe, you know, they, 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 may, they may point it out that, why don't you cite this guy? Why don't you cite this uh, academic, this scholar, something like that, right? Or maybe, you know, if you do, if you do uh, research in some particular fields, right, and there are some big names, some big scholars in the field, that you must cite. And if you don't, right, this might uh, make your paper fail to be accepted, right? So uh, make sure that you cite the right persons, okay? Uh, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. The last one, violation of research ethics, right? Uh, this is very important and this, this could be overlooked by some researchers, some authors. Well established journals are very particular about research ethics and will not hesitate to send you a rejection later if your research violates standard ethical procedures, right? Uh, for example, if you are doing qualitative research and you want to uh, cite some quotation from student opinion, right, or perception, right? You, you can say participant one, participant two, or maybe use pseudonyms, right? But if you use the student real name, 
right? Oh, this is serious, right? You are you are violating the research ethics, right? Oh, yeah, another thing that some people are not aware of is multiple submission. You cannot submit two manuscripts that are exactly the same to more than one journal. For example, if you submit your journal to PASA, uh, sorry, submit your manuscript to PASA, right? You should not, actually you cannot submit the same manuscript yeah. to learn journal or reflections or anything, right? Because, you know, don't think that this can increase your opportunity, no. Because, right, I mean, I mean, sometimes the editors, we are in the same field and the editors talk to one another, right? And if, if we found that, right, the paper will be rejected and you will be blacklisted. Or even if you got your papers uh, published, finally, you know, some, some uh, this is something that happened in the past, but not to learn journal, right? It happened to some of the journals that I know, right? Uh, one author published in this journal, right? And then the same author who is dishonest, right? Submit, you know, actually he submitted the same manuscript to two journals, right? And once the one a national journal accepted, he said, okay, okay, I am happy, I'm satisfied, I will publish with you. And then at the same time, this author was still waiting for, uh, you know, the positive response from another journal that is an international one and with higher rank, right? And finally, the international journal happened to accept him three months later. And the author, uh, you know, they broke the research ethics by getting the same paper published, right? Uh, this is not allowed, right? This is not allowed. You cannot have two papers published uh, into journals. Oh, you know, maybe this, this author will come back to the national journal editor and say, please, can you withdraw my paper? Because I don't want to publish with you any longer, right? Despite the fact that the paper appears in the journal already, right? So, you know, right, uh, you cannot do that. Right now, you know, uh, all the journals, they have policy. You need to make a it clear from the start. You, you have to maybe write it in a statement, right? To show that uh, you are not submitting the paper, the same paper to another journal, or maybe it's not considered by another journal. Otherwise you are going to be penalized and you, you have to bear the consequence, something like that. Uh -huh. Okay, so I think uh, today I have covered all the, all the main points, yeah? Right, on what Scopus is, right, the titles of the journals that you can find useful and you can submit your papers to. And the last thing, oh, one thing that I would like to make it a point is right now that usually, you know, in the past, most journals did not care about uh, the research ethic in the sense that they, they, they didn't care about the human uh, research ethics. Right, so, so right now, you know, in Thailand, and I think in many other countries, right, before you start uh, your actual study or your main study, you need to get approval from maybe human research committee, right, to make sure that you are not going to uh, misuse your participants or you are not going to do them harm, right? And you know, if you don't get endorsement, you cannot start your research project, right? And right now, uh, there are some journals that started to to ask for you know the forms like that for example did you have any approval uh, from the research committee in your organization in at your university if you have so please attach it something like that right okay so this is something that you should be aware of nah? Okay, I think we still have time, right? About 30 minutes for Q's and A's. All right, so, thank you Ajahn so Mutona, much. I'm gonna right. stop yeah. Right, thank you so much, Dr. Supergon, right? Um, <clears throat> during this time, we still have some time for questions and uh, I do have some questions posted right. on our chat, right? Um, uh, but now I'm waiting for someone else to like to to ask the question first. Then, so if anyone in the floor 
on the floor would love to ask some questions, please do. Do you have any questions for the speaker at all? Yes. Any? We welcome all the questions, right? Or if you have anything to share with us, maybe your experience, please do so. Right. Um, uh, right now, I, I, I think I have, I have some, um, some uh, questions posted on the chat box, right? Uh, first of all, could you please like show us how to track the statistic of journal in a quartile or how to check whether a journal is listed in Scopus at all? Okay, yeah, uh, I, I mean, I mean, you, you can go to Scopus website, right? I, I don't have, I don't think I have time to show it, right? But you can go to Scopus website, just, just type the word Scopus, right? And it's going to be the first hit in Google, right? Yeah, uh, you know, you, you see the green, the, the, the white page with the green, the green color of the word Scopus, right? That's the most, that's the official one. And you can type the the title, but make sure that you type the title correctly. This, this means you know the title of the journal that you want to check against, right? Uh, another thing is Saimago, right? You, you can try Saimago. Uh, okay, I, 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 I may try, I may try to share uh, the screen again, but this time I'm going to use Google. Right, I think we still have time. Maybe it will take you like five minutes. And a half. Happening now. Okay. 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 I'm ready now. Let me share. Okay, that's a good question, right? That's a very good question. So now you can see my Google page, right? So you can type the word Saimago, right? Saimago journal rank, something like that, right? Okay. So 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 all of you can you 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 can see my screen right okay here you can enter the journal right or you can just you can just go to journal rank uh right explore the journal rank right here and then uh specify your areas right for example us and humanities and in the subject categories you can choose uh language and linguistics right okay so they are going to show uh, all the all the all the journals index in Q, right? And then, you know, they also give you the, the citation score. For example, you know, it shows that modern language journal is the best one, right? Because, you know, it has the high impact, right? And the high size scores, followed by Journal of Communication, Studies in Second Language Acquisition, Applied Linguistic, and so on and so forth, right? And, you know, you can see the citation scores three years, right? Uh, you can see the country where the journal uh, is located right but you have to be careful right it doesn't mean that all the journals right it doesn't mean that all the journals that appear inside Marco are currently indexed in Scopus some used to be indexed in Scopus right it, it was indexed in Scopus before but maybe because of uh, the poor performance uh, for, or for some other reason it was you know removed from Scopus but but it still exists in Saimago and the quartile is going to move up and up over time, right? That, that's why, you know, some people misunderstand this, thinking that, oh, I got it published. It, 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 it's in Scopus because it still has quartile, no, right? It's unnecessary, right? For example, uh, you may try some, right, uh, English language, for, for example, English language teaching. Uh, sorry. Yeah, nah. You you have to be very careful, right? Okay, this one. 
right now, okay, right now there are many journals that are called hijacked journals, right? Hijacked journals mean they use similar, they use similar title as well established ones, right? Yeah, so, so they, they might change something. For example, look at this one, English language teaching, right? You know, in our fields, we have a very good journal called ELT. And we know that in our field, ELT stands for English language uh, teaching, right? But you know, they are in under different titles, right? A very good one is published by Oxford University Press and it's called only ELT. Right, but this one is published by another organization, right? And do you know they use the, the term English language teaching? That could be misleading, but see, look at this. This continue in Scorpus as of 2015. See, so be careful when, when before you submit your paper to any journals, right? Yeah, you can check inside Marco. Anyone can access inside Marco, right? Easily, right? H index is very high. H index uh, is associated with citation, right? Yeah, so it means that once a journal get indexed in Scopus, it will be, it will stay forever in inside Marco, right? But you have to be very careful. Yeah, this continue in Scopus. But here, see, you can see the, what, yeah. The, the queue, right? Right now, you know, if, if you use the mouse to point at any color, it will show the queue. Like the yellow means Q2, red means Q4, yeah. Orange Q3, green Q1. And you know, the quartile moves up and up or maybe down and down. I mean, the quartile continues, right? The quartile continues, right? So it means, uh, first of all, you have to make sure that the journal that you want to publish your articles in exists in Scopus and it stills, right? It stills, right? Uh, another question that is a classic one. Um, if you look at Saimago, right, like this, I'm sorry. Um, okay. 2018, so maybe you know, uh, actually it should go to 2019, but for some reason, right? But uh, if you check, if you check some, some journals, right? Okay, uh, like, okay, let me try RELC journal, which is a very good one from Singapore, real journal, uh -huh. RELC journal. Okay, this one. Yeah, Singapore, but actually it was published in the UK, right? Ah, H index is very high, right? Right. And see, okay, so you can see it has a very long history and right now it is in Q1 in all the three subfields, right? You know, in 2018, uh, it's still Q2 in education, but for language and linguistic, and linguistic and language, you, you may get confused, right? Why language and linguistic and linguistic and language? They, you know that there is a very subtle difference. Language and linguistics mean they focus on uh, something. This is like language study. Uh, you study in something about language, right? But, but with the word linguistic, you use some linguistic method to study, right? So they are quite close, right? But the focus is not exactly the same, right? Okay, uh, uh, that's okay. You can see that it's stopped at 2019, but it doesn't mean that it has been kicked out from Scopus. No, right? Actually, actually, be because you know, uh, this year is 2021, right? And just March, right? The data in 2020 is still being processed. Right. It means you know the, the the information is not available yet. If you happen to see some other journals that happen to have uh, the quartile in 2020, right? It means you know it's it's very new. It's quite recent. But so far, right? So far, right, the quartile stops here at 2019. So you know I have received uh, some some emails asking about whether a learned journal is still included in Scopus. And you know, many other editors in Thai journals uh, receive similar emails, right? So you can check, right? If it's not say discontinued, it means it's still okay, right? 
if it is discontinued, it would be somewhere around here, uh, beneath the journal title, right? It would say discontinued, right? You know, some, some journals, they were discontinued from Scopus and then they came back, right? They got, they got indexed again and they got discontinued again, right? So please be very careful. Don't look at the quartile only, right? Right, thank you so much. We have one um, participant raising hand. Uh, do you have any yeah. question to ask? Right, Ipan, please. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, Hi. I'm Amir Pan Batubara from Bandung, Indonesia. So yes. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Sukhorn for, for the very insightful uh, presentation. Actually, I have joined a number of uh, webinar about uh, Scopus or reputable journal publication. And I think I've got uh, another point of view of uh, how actually the world of publication. So I think that is very interesting that uh, Dr. Superkorn uh, show us uh, as a newbie researcher uh, who dream of publishing our uh, paper in reputable journal that actually uh, the possibility to communicate with uh, with editor even before we submit our manuscript is very possible. And that's why in box uh, I have uh, written my question there about uh, how actually the moderate or acceptable communication with the uh, editor is. But then I have another question. The second question is, uh, Maybe this is a rumor, but I don't know whether it's true or not. Then I would, I want to hear from Dr. Supakorn uh, about the real fact. Actually, is is that true that uh, the better you know the editor of one journal, the better welcome your manuscript will be. <laughs> Actually, I know that when I open one uh, journal website, for example, I know the list of the editor and I can uh, trace, for example, their their profile on ResearchGate and I, I try to find their email. So I want to hear from you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Erpen, right, for your very good question, right? This is something that some of you might be wondering about, right? I mean, if we know, if we know the editor, uh, does it mean we can increase our opportunity to get it, to get our paper published? Uh, I cannot I cannot answer on behalf of uh, all editors in the field, right? But you know, for for the journal, it it doesn't it, it's it's not the case, right? So we look at the 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 quality of the paper, right? We look at the quality of the paper because you know uh, some some close friends of mine submitting. Uh, low quality manuscripts to learn journal, right? And I had to reject it, right? But, but you know, we are going to communicate. If I know that person personally, I might call him or her and say that, please withdraw, right? The quality doesn't meet our standards. So, so you, you know, but I try, I try not to upset them, right? But, but you know, if they say, uh, right, or maybe, right, the, the, some of the paper looks a bit okay, but it got rejected by both reviewers, right? Sometimes, you know, I feel very uncomfortable because I know the author very well, right? But I have to respect the, the, the reviewer's decision. Okay, but if the reviewers, there are two reviewers, if their decision are opposite, for example, one say reject, the other say accept with minor revision, I'm going to take a look at the comments. Uh, is one of them too tough or is the other uh, too generous, right? And you know, in such a case, I'm going to look for the third reviewer, right? I'm going to look for another reviewer to cross check, right? And you know, I ask the editor in chief, we make the final decision, but, but you know, I am not so sure because you know, there are many other journals that, that I know, and uh, you know, I'm a good friend of some people, right? And I submitted my paper there and I got rejected, right? So, so maybe it, it shows that it's not always the case, right? It's not always the case. For example, I'm, I'm you know, working, I'm, I'm you know, uh, Asia TEFL member and, you know, 
we have organized Asia TELFO in Bangkok, right? Yeah, but when I submitted my manuscript to Asia TELFO journal, I got rejected twice, right? So, you know, don't be afraid to get rejected, right? It is normal to get rejected. If anyone say, I never get rejected at all in my life, they lie to you. Or maybe they never submit, right? That's why they never get rejected. So, so I'm, I'm going to give you moral support, right? Don't be, don't worry, right? If you get rejected by one journal, don't submit it again. Don't be submit to the same journal, but take useful comments, constructive feedback, and revise your paper and submit it to another journal, right? Okay. Yeah, or maybe, you know, you can be a bit less ambitious and submit it to another journal that is in a, a bit lower quartile, right? And you'll be successful. Okay. At this so time, the, you may do better research are... and you can submit it to the journal that you have passion for, something like that. Okay, so my I think my first question has not been answered, Dr. Superkorn, the, the okay. acceptable communication with uh, journal editor. Do you have any you know any insight for us so that uh, okay what do you mean you, what do you mean by acceptable like, communication like uh if i'm not mistaken uh i mean correct me if i'm wrong that uh in your uh, explanation you told us about uh, the possibility to email the yes editor presents yes. to ask the whether our manuscript uh is in the scope of the journal, it means that it is possible for us to yes, communicate yes, yes, yeah, yes, with yes. the editor. So yeah, how, how do we do that? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you can you can do it. You can do it, right? It's not forbidden, right? I mean, I think I think for almost all journals, you can you can write emails to the editor, right? To ask in case you are not so sure, right? This is about the aim and scope, but they are not going to judge the quality of your paper. Maybe you know you can send the abstract. You know, first, you don't have to send the whole paper, right? Maybe you have copyright, right? You just send the abstract. The editor, who is uh, very experienced, will judge from the abstract whether or not, uh, you know, it fits the aim and scope. But they are not looking at the quality, right? Yeah, I mean, for the quality, you have to submit it through the normal channel, right? And wait, right, in the, in the line, right? But you can, you can email them. But, you know, you have to wait because, as I say, Editors are often busy, and some are even more busy than you can imagine, right? So maybe you know it takes them like weeks to respond, or maybe you know, uh, you know your your email has gone into his or her spam, right? So maybe you know he he was not aware of your uh, email, something like that. But but you know, please email, right? I mean, don't waste your time submitting your manuscript, despite the fact that you are not so sure about you know whether or not it's compatible with the aim and scope thank, right, thank you. you so much you, then uh, much. we do have thank one you. one one more person to ask a question for us right ajan narumon right uh, please please okay. do ask a question okay ajan narumon turn up okay um good morning everyone good morning ajan Supercon and other uh, lecturers and participants so Actually, I'm planning to ask for uh, my new title, assistant professor, probably yes. next year. Since yes. I plan to get my two research done, probably uh, at the end of the year, but it depends <laughs> on um, on my laziness, probably. So I'm quite worried about the uh, new criteria. So, and also my discipline. So is that okay if I will publish in like um, Q4 index journals? And then can I use that as a requirement for uh, to ask for my new title, assistant professor probably next year or yeah, something like that. It depends on my discipline. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Thank you. you actually, Ajana uh, is our alumnus, right? Uh, actually, you know, she was our former student, right? So, so you know, my answer is yes, you can you can publish in Q4 or whatever, because, you know, in Thailand, Scorpus is beyond, right? Scorpus is beyond standard, right? Actually, you know, you can get your papers published in Thai Journal Citation Index, right? But right now, what I have heard, right, the most recent news is that, uh, you know, you don't need to publish in even TCI, but, but, you know, because, you know, the 
the judges, right? I mean, those who are like distinguished scholars that, you know, in Thailand, when you ask for academic title, right, there would be three, there'll be three, three scholars who are going to judge the quality of your papers being submitted, right? So, you know, right now, they don't care whether or not they are indexed in, in whatever database, right? Uh, that, that's why, you know, you don't, actually, Nanumon, you don't have to get your papers published in Scopus. Only in TCI is good enough. But if you can, you can manage to publish in Scopus, that would be an advantage, right? Yeah, because, you know, this is something, yeah, I, I mean, the better uh, database, right? I, I mean, the higher quartile, yeah, the better for you. Because for example, if you get your papers published in, in good journals, for example, if you manage to get published in TESOL quarterly, right? Anyone who read your paper will pass you anyway. I, I mean, maybe they, they would even pass you before they read your work, I think, because you know, they, they trust the quality of the journal. Or if you can publish in ESP system, right? Yeah, but it depends on the level that you are asking for. If you are asking for assistant professorship, you will pass for sure. But if you are asking for full professorship, maybe they have to take a look at the quality, whether or not it's insightful enough. Nah. So, so Narumon, you can you can get started, right? Don't worry, right? Don't worry. Yeah, thank you. And how about uh, TCI two? For example, if I plan to pop, I have my Yes, research, there is no rule. Uh, you know, usually, you know, for those who are non thai there are two levels of TCI, tier one and tier two. Tier one is better than tier two. But again, as I said right now, even TCI tier two, right, with TCI tier two, you can get, uh, you can ask for assistant professorship. And if I'm not wrong, you can even ask for associate professorship, right? Um, but yeah. if we adhere to the, the, the current rules. Yeah, okay. um, so because I'm worried about the new rules uh, that come in. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry, another moment, right? Do your research and get it published, right? Um, yeah, last question. Uh, yes. Okay, if I have my both research published in T, uh, TCI2, and then will it still safe to, you know, follow the, the new criteria? You know, I mean, to still get the assistant professor, you know, to be safe. Uh, um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't quite understand what you okay. are asking. Oh, I mean, Nandumon, can you rephrase that? What, what is your concern? Mm -hmm. So if I still, you know, um, if I still want to pop, uh, have my two research published in TCI two, and then mm -hmm. I will keep it, uh, because I'm worried that my research, I mean, might might not be uh, published on time. And then that that's the time the new criteria come. Uh, will I be able to use the two research that uh oh, I know, I know your point yeah, now. Okay. I know your point now, right? So it depends on the new criteria. I don't know what the new criteria uh right. Mm -hmm. So so you know, for example, if they say if they say mm -hmm. uh they don't accept any papers published in TCI TCI2. So yeah. for, for example, it means you are going to lose the two papers, right? But I don't think so, right? I don't think so, right? But you know, the safest way is get it published in any, maybe international journals like those uh, index in ERIC, right? Uh, yeah. okay. So, so it's going to be you. safe. It's going to be safe. No more. I so may I move on to, yeah, okay. thank you very much, Yuina. You can ask me later on, right? Because you yeah, are yeah. quite close to me. Uh, may I, may I entertain Ajahn Chotip's question, right? Ajahn Chotip uh, asked about turnaround time for Learn Journal, right? Uh, maybe two or uh, the turnaround time could be as long as six months right now, right? So it depends, right? Because, you know, we have a lot in the pipeline, now more than 40 in the pipeline. And, you know, I, we have to work very hard to, to respond to, to all the manuscript being submitted, right? So uh, usually, you know, about two or three months, you will get feedback. I mean, if you pass the initial screening, right? I mean, we are going to check your manuscript against our AMS goal, and also we are going to use turn it in to check for plagiarism. If you pass the initial screening, right, we are going to send it out to two reviewers, and you, you know, we, we give them three weeks, but, but maybe it takes us time to find reviewers who, whose knowledge matches 
you know, the area of expertise of the paper be, uh, submitted, right? And sometimes, right, some of them are late, some of them are busy, they are university lecturers, or maybe, you know, when, you, when we are looking for uh, international uh, reviewers, some do not reply, some do not respond to our emails, so we have to wait maybe, and then we have to look for new reviewers. That, that's why it's quite time consuming. But you know the the system is the same. I mean, I mean this, uh, the standard is the same uh, across for all the journals uh, across the world, right? So, so I, I would say the turnaround time for for learn is about six to seven months, right? It, it could be faster. And also, you know, another factor is the writer. Maybe you know you receive comments, and you know the comment is you know too much, right? Some with some authors withdraw, or maybe some authors say, okay, um, maybe I, it, it's gonna take me like three or four months to revise, right? So, you know, this is going to lengthen the time span, right? Okay, so but, but right, I thank have you some so information much. from the other journals that you asked. Right, um, can I have one uh, last question, like from, from uh, Bill Moore? Yes. Hi. Sure. Good morning. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Good morning. Supakon, hats yes. off for the presentation. Very impressive. Thank you. Now, my question is something to do with an observation I had a few, few years back. I found two journal articles from two different writers, uh, same field. Hmm. I noticed that there are some portions which are exactly similar verbatimly similar. So I can tell who copied who. So now my question is, uh, do journals have their own post publication mechanism to ensure that those articles that are published are protected and are not you know, copied by someone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Usually, you know, as edit, this is a very good question, right? No one has ever mentioned this before, right? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes, you know, we know for sure that they maybe they plagiarize each other, even though they were written by two different people, right? Maybe, of course, the one that published later, right? Yeah, plagiarize the former one, right? So, um, but my point is that usually, you know, uh, the journals, right? All the journals, right? The editorial team for the journals, they try their best to check, right? To check the similarity. So they use the program, the software called Turnitin, that check similarity, right? And you know, uh, usually, you know, to get in to get published in Scopus journals, like like we never allow, even though you self-plagiarize. For example, a few months ago, right? We got a paper from. Uh, Iran, right? And you know, we checked uh, against turn it in, and we found the similarity for about seventy-five because this particular author copied their own, uh, his own original text from his PhD dissertation, and we say, you know, we cannot accept that. Yeah, I mean, you can summarize the main point, you can condense the main points, right? Or maybe you know, draw something and highlight it, but you cannot just copy and paste from your PhD dissertation, right? So, so we cannot publish, right? It's against the Scopus policy, but you know, the writer did not seem to understand and wrote back to me and say, why can't I copy my own text? No one would sue me because that's, you know, self copying something like that, but you know, actually you cannot do that, right? Uh, what you write in dissertation, maybe, is one thing, but you have to transfer only the gist or the main points. But what, what uh, Professor Fibor has just mentioned is a very good point, right? So maybe, you know, some people uh, plagiarize that. Uh, there are some ways, uh, you know, uh, in the past, we, we found a similar case when we receive one manuscript, right? We check it against, uh, Turn it in, and we found very low percentage of similarity. That's why we sent it to reviewers. And later on, we happened to, to, to find that the same author published more or less the same thing, but in Thai. You, you, know, you know, she or he, I don't know, uh, published already, right, in Thai, right? And then submit a manuscript 
right? Of course, literature is the same. The findings are very similar, right? I mean, the overlap is like more than 70% and submitted to learn journal in English, right? But, but you know, uh, be, because, you know, I, I researched, right? We searched uh, and we found that this particular writer uh, was uh, a bit dishonest because, you know, uh, he or she published the same findings already, right? So, so that's why finally we cannot allow allow that paper to be published. But, but you know, this is not what we want to because actually we paid we paid the reviewers already, right? But but that's because Turnitin was not able to check it because it's plagiarism across languages, right? Okay. Uh, is there any any question in the in the in the um, chat? Uh, I, I, I don't think we don't we don't we have any more time for uh, the questions. So if you yeah. have any questions for the speaker, please feel free to email uh, right, Dr. Right, directly, right? Right. 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 So um, uh, under this opportunity, I would love to thank our speaker, right, Dr. Sipapon, Pooja Ransin, like for giving us quite a valuable and useful right, uh, guidelines on how to and how not to uh, get your papers published. Right, so um, that's a very good opportunity for us, right? Then um, I would love to share with you a little bit like of next webinar, right? The next webinar is coming up next year on research, right? Trends in ELT materials and move developments, right? And um, we will post this again on on YouTube on on our um, uh, our Facebook page, right? So please uh, feel free to um, you know. Uh, come together and join us again every month like this, right? Um, right, um, by this time, I think it's better, right, to take photo together, right, right. for the last session. Right. Huh? Yeah, please turn on your camera, right? right? And then Dr. Right. Can, can yeah, camera. capture, right? Thank you very much for joining us, right? Yeah, yeah, and you know, I'm, I'm so happy to see, you know, international people and, and also, you know, those who are from other university in Thailand, right? Uh, please feel free to email me. I'm going. Uh, I'm going to answer all the questions, right? Or if you are have, if you happen to be my Facebook friends, uh, please uh, you can drop me some right. uh, messages, right? Okay. Right. Uh, okay. So we got to uh, evaluation. Right. Um, the evaluation form is already in the chat. Please do help uh, evaluate the session as well for the improvement of our webinar later on. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, and now we're going to take a photo, right? So. Three, two, one, action. Okay, one more time. Three, two, one, action. Okay, and one last time then. <laughs> one, three, two, one. Okay, right. So thank you so, so much everyone for um, joining us uh, with the little webinar, right? So hope to see you again next month for the next um, uh, research seminar as well, right? So. Um, have a good day and be safe and stay healthy, right? And be prosperous in your work as well, right? So and thank you so much. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you, Nakab. Thank you, Dr. Bunton, for being the best moderator today. Thank you, everyone, little faculty members, and thank also you, you thank know, you, our, thank dance, you. our uh, alumni and international people to join us. Nakab, thank you. And see you. Right, thank you. Bye. So see much. you soon. Bye bye. Thank bye you. bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh...